Good morning. It's Monday, July 15, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Playing Church, and our scripture is Amos chapter 3. Announce this to the leaders of Philistia and to the great ones of Egypt. Take your seats now on the hills around Samaria and witness the chaos and oppression in Israel. My people have forgotten how to do right, says the Lord. Their fortresses are filled with wealth taken by theft and violence. Therefore, says the Sovereign Lord, an enemy is coming. He will surround them and shatter their defenses. Then he will plunder all their fortresses. This is what the Lord says. A shepherd who tries to rescue a sheep from a lion's mouth will recover only two legs or a piece of an ear. So it will be for the Israelites in Samaria lying on luxurious beds and for the people of Damascus reclining on couches. Now listen to this and announce it throughout all Israel, says the Lord, the Lord God of heaven's armies. On the very day I punish Israel for its sins, I will destroy the pagan altars at Bethel. The horns of the altar will be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will destroy the beautiful homes of the wealthy, their winter mansions and their summer houses too, all their palaces filled with ivory, says the Lord. Listen to me, you fat cows living in Samaria, you women who oppress the poor and crush the needy and who are always calling to your husbands, bring us another drink. The Sovereign Lord has sworn this by His Holiness. The time will come when you will be led away with hooks in your noses. Every last one of you will be dragged away like a fish on a hook. You will be led out through the ruins of the wall. You will be thrown from your fortresses, says the Lord. Go ahead and offer sacrifices to the idols at Bethel. Keep on disobeying at Gilgal. Offer sacrifices each morning and bring your tithes every three days. Present your bread made with yeast as an offering of thanksgiving. Then give your extra voluntary offerings so you can brag about it everywhere. This is the kind of thing you Israelites love to do, says the Sovereign Lord. When God extended the invitation to Egypt and Philistia, arch enemies of Israel, to take a front row seat and watch the humiliation of defeat that God was engineering to straighten out his rowdy children, it should have brought waves of fear in Jerusalem and Judea. If anyone knew what the powerful wrath of God looks like in action, it was the children of Abraham. These former slaves, people who had nothing, were led out of Egypt by Moses and a miraculous GPS cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. They watched as the Red Sea swallowed Pharaoh's stormtroopers who were in hot pursuit. They saw 23,000 of their fellow Israelites swallowed by the earth's crust and fire when Korah led a rebellion against Moses. They watched thousands die at the bite of venomous snakes when they complained against God. These people had seen God's wrath. But they had forgotten all that and forgotten how to do right. Their sin was playing at church. They kept the rituals but forgot how to do right. They were going to relearn. I've never claimed to be a prophet. However, there is this foreboding deep within my spirit about the state of the current culture in America which I cannot shake. It has amazing parallels to Israel of old, those who were blessed by heaven's hand and descended into hell's ways. They saw ways to accumulate wealth by oppressing others. They refined and strengthened their hold on the weak in order to become stronger, lazier, and increasingly self-indulgent. Justice was a laughable joke, and the powerful saw to it their power would require others to look to them as God. Now, the parallel I fear most in the comparison of America as the new Israel is we have the old Israel's same mindset, accumulation of power, wealth, and the ability to keep others under control. It's hedonism multiplied by situational ethics, empowered by a calloused heart that looks out for number one. With apologies, perhaps, to President Trump, it's the art of the deal as king. Get from others before they get from you. America, as a nation, is not generous and gracious. 
We are despised in the world today for our arrogance and childish selfishness. We dole out a bit of our resources here and there to the poverty-stricken third world countries, but it's little more than dangling the carrot in front of the enslaved mule to make sure he keeps walking to the beat of our drum. For you today. While it's true that there are many thousands, perhaps millions of Americans who much more truly reflect the Jesus-following life, generous, gracious, and God-honoring, what we see coming out of Washington is a 21st century God invitation for wrathful judgment. May he have mercy in his wrath. We stand in need of it. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.